moving in. Don't mind me. Welcome. Hi. How's your phone call? Long. Am I the only one who's doing taxes this time of year? I don't think so. I think everyone's having long phone calls around exactly. taxes this time of year. In fact, everywhere I go, it's like tax, taxi, 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 quick, 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 yep. quick, 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 Yeah, well, it'll be over soon, a little bit. Everybody will be like, anyway, about summer and hot dogs and barbecues. How's it going in here? Is there a lot of like remnants from winter? You know, it looks okay. It's I think pretty good. We changed the water out right before winter. Shortly before, because there's not much junk here, and I remember no changing it out. So yeah, it took a while to drain. Oh, Vacuumed okay. the whole truck, polished it like on Holy the inside. Holy smokes! Now it needs a bath. Captain productivity. And then, then I remembered we have to pull the drain plug to finish draining the rest. Oh yeah. So I was waiting for that to vacuum. So now it's ready to wash the sides and vacuum. Nice. But yeah. And then ready to fill. Yeah. I got the parts that we need to um, change over the water system to get rid of the pressure regulators. Uh -huh. I'll get those installed right now. And then there's nothing to keep us from basically going for it. We should probably go up to the cisterns and just see where they're at. Yeah. And then, I don't know, like we're a country mile from the overflow, which was really bad planning on our part. We should probably go make sure the overflow's clear and everything's good so that we can fill it till she overflows. So I'll go work on the plumbing while you spit shine this. That Does that work? Good. And then we'll fill this first. And then, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay. So here's the results of our 24 hour test. It's looking really good. That's of course the water that came out of the well untreated. And this stuff is what we ran through the water softener yesterday. We left this out overnight. So it's about 24 hours old and I don't see any oxidized iron in there, also known as rust. So yesterday when we were getting this thing primed, we were using pressure regulators to try to keep the pressure down from the well. The well pump can push 100 25 PSI, I think. And because we were priming this tank, we didn't want all that pressure coming in here and blowing the media out. But the problem is it reduces the pressure so far that I don't think we can actually pump the water to the top of the hill because the head pressure alone, I think is around 29 or 30 pounds. And these pressure reducers reduce the pressure down to about 30 pounds. So we're gonna take these out and then we should be able to use the full pressure from the pump through the water softener and that'll fill the cisterns no problem. Hmm. Guys, I think I just figured out your secret trick. Oh, that's dirty. I never thought about doing it this way before. Oh, that's awesome. So much better than what I was doing. <laughs> Some of you plumbers out there were screaming at me for the way I was doing this before. Turn the tape around. Good stuff. pressure regulator is gone. Looks like our backwash hose is good. I turned the inlet and outlet hoses to the bypass setting because taking those hoses and stuff off has introduced air into the system. And I think we're probably gonna wanna flush that again to get the air out of there before we run water through the softener. So we'll probably do that for just a minute and then we'll go to the normal setting or whatever that is. And then I'll keep our media in the tank. And then let's see, there's a regulator at the well but that one's really easy to take off because it's basically like a hose fitting. Uh, let's see here, what do we have left for gallons? It looks like 13.45. The hot tub is about 350 gallons and that'll leave us with a thousand gallons to put in the cisterns. My gut is that's gonna be too much. All right, we did a bunch of hose switching around. I think we're ready to go. Okay. So we're just gonna put well water through there first and then we'll turn the softener on and then we'll wait for the water to clear up. And once it's clear, the phone today, uh, we'll start putting in the hot tub, okay? Sounds good. Okay. No, uh-uh. Um, it's really muddy. Are you sure you wanna come over here? He really likes you. <laughs> He's not sure he wants to. <laughs> come here. Come here. Oh, Mom's the icky. Safe. Oh, oh. Mom's safe. Oh.
<laughs> oh, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. And that's full pressure, by the way. There's no regulator on there anymore, so that thing's gonna be shooting like a fire hydrant. Okay, maybe not that much. All right, do we have any leaks? No known leaks. Let's go this direction. We should get pressure coming into the backwash. Okay. Probably should open that slowly because any air is gonna burp the system again. Are we getting backwash now? No, not yet. Wait, it sounds like this tank's filling up. That's not good. Patience, I guess. I was concerned that yesterday when we turned this whole thing off and like turned the well off and all this stuff, that it didn't create suction because we set the well up kind of like a frost free hydrant with a weep hole about 10 or 20 feet down. So it's frost proof. The problem is it creates a back siphon and normally you put a device on your hydrant or whatever that's a siphon or a vacuum breaker and we don't have one of those. Maybe we should put one on so that we don't end up sucking backwards through this system. As you can tell, this whole thing's a bit kind of temporary or a lot temporary. All right, it's full open now. Hasn't been in the toilet yet. And we're showing seven gallons a minute flow. Let's get a bucket and we'll go out to the end of the hose and then we'll check it for clarity. And once it gets clear, we should start filling the hot tub. So this should be filtered. Yep. In a minute, I mean, we have to give it a little bit of time to. It's looking better. Better. I can't tell if it's still as iron or if the bottom of the bucket's kind of stained. Yeah. I think it's iron. I think it's iron in the water. It's a lot of hose to get through. Yeah, shouldn't take that long though. The only concern I have is that the flow rate's too high. I don't know why that would be an issue. Yeah, I don't know why that would be an issue. So we're about 20 gallons, so we're definitely, there's no way there's 20 gallons in 100 feet of hose. No. It's fairly consistent. Like, I wouldn't say each bucket's getting more clear. Nope, I would say it's consistent, yep. So I'm gonna go look at the water softener and see what the flow rate is. I don't know, that's never been discussed. We never discussed that of being a problem. It does make sense though, like this is really high flow. This is like 10 gallons a minute. We only needed the reducer for priming was my understanding, but it looks to me like we're, we, we, we may be outrunning the softener at 10 gallons a minute, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no problem, thanks. Bye. So I'm thinking that taxes are gonna keep us from getting our cisterns filled tonight. Do you get that feeling? That's I'm the third starting phone to call. Get that feeling. That's the third phone call in an hour. We're getting to the bottom of it though, and that was good news. I'll take those phone calls any day. It wasn't bad news, it was good news. So what's going on with our softener? So, so you just reduced the flow with the Y. I just the turned y. it off. I just turned oh, the gotcha. flow off, yeah. Okay. So we're getting no gallons per minute. That's good. We went through 60 gallons just now, according wow. to this. That's crazy. I mean, that's way more than is in the hose. Maybe let's try just putting the pressure reducer back on there. It's gonna change our flow, because I remember yesterday seeing like three gallons a minute. Let's just see what happens, even if it fills slowly. I mean, it's gonna fill this, the hot tub pretty fast, mm -hmm. but three gallons a minute's not what I was thinking. Because, I mean, our pump's capable of 10. Right. And I think I just saw nine on here when we went outside. Yeah, let's just change something and see if we can get back to the clear water. Because I thought, I mean, the water that we had yesterday was absolutely perfect. So something changed. Okay, so we're going to go back to the softener now. By softener, you mean bucket. Sorry, yes, the bucket. Uh, better? Well, it's only been going for a minute, so. Right. We'll give it a second here. We let it run for quite a while yesterday, if I remember right. That's no better to me. No better? No, not yet. No. Man, we had it nailed yesterday. Yeah, should have done it yesterday. That'll teach us. So that's probably about five gallons. Let's run one more bucket, and if it's not improving, we'll go inside and see if we can figure out what's going on. It's a part of me that wonders if the system is really, in fact, charged, like oh. factory charged. I don't know why, but like I'm skeptical. Almost like it had enough charge to do like a the first gallons. little bit. Yeah, that's basically well water. Okay. I'd say that's better. That's better. 
but not as good. No, and that could just be the well getting better, not the Right, yeah, softener. it's not cistern quality. <laughs> Maybe we have false expectations. We believe our water should be perfect. It's pretty good. There's no iron in that at all. And there's no hardness. It's definitely not what it was yesterday. I, I wouldn't color. settle for that. I wouldn't put that in our cistern. Nope. I'd be okay filling up our hot tub with it. Yeah, well, let's go look at the softener really quick and let that run for a little bit and see kind of if we can figure out what's going on. Maybe if we look at what's coming out of the well, it'll give us like an apples to apples. So let me grab a bucket. So that's what we had yesterday. I mean, that's perfectly clear water. Yeah. That's what's coming out of the well. The same thing. Same thing. So, softener maybe is doing something, jack. Something's not working at the softener. <sighs> Let's let that go for a second. So, it's filling the brine tank right now. Which, by the way, guys, I just did like a simple test this morning and I pulled the float valve and everything out of the brine tank. And guess what? It's just because water. the brine tank's not full enough. So there actually is a ball that stops it from drawing the bottom of the tank empty. So there's always water in the bottom of your brine tank. So we need to fill the brine tank more so that it'll actually draw out. But it's, it's doing that right now. So let's let it do that for just a second here. Yep, it's filling up. Not fast, but it's filling up. That's gonna take forever, so we'll just do it the manual way. So softening, we don't want that. Backwash. Let's do that. So we want that to be flowing just water to make sure there's no air in here at all. Okay, so now it should be like pretty heavy flow coming into the toilet. Yep. Okay. So now we're in rinse, so we should be getting good flow through here. Okay, and then we'll go to open. So now we should be in full open and it's calculating the gallons per minute. It says two gallons per minute. So something to note is it reset the gallons remaining because we just basically went through the region oh, cycle, right. so we just confused the crap out of it. Let's go try it again. Let's try the bucket thing. It's really hard to tell with your light. Well, light it looks dirty to me right light now. Light twinges it yellow. Yeah. Or it is yellow. It is yellow. No, no improvement. So what's really strange is like the iron and the softness are there, or the iron's gone and the softness is there. So it's 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 good water. Yesterday the water was absolutely right. immaculate. Yep. So what what changed? Like there's no iron in there at all. Let me taste what's coming out of the well. Oh yeah. There's definitely iron there, and that water's hard. Okay. It's doing its job. But for some reason, we're not getting the level of clarity that we had yesterday. It's It's got some turbidity to it. So I'm thinking, soften it. Run it through a backwash cycle and see what happens, you know? And we'll try this all again tomorrow. Because this isn't bad. Like, it doesn't have the irony taste. It doesn't taste like hard water. So it's doing its job, but we're, we're losing some element of the, back of the like, sediment filtration mm -hmm. or something. I, I would be worried that there's still iron in here. It's just not, I Tastable. can't taste it. Right because it's, it's in solution. So I guess we'll just put it through a backwash cycle tonight and then try this all again tomorrow and see if we can get a better water result. So we've decided to do a manual regeneration just in case that somehow or another, maybe it's not primed from the factory or something like that. It's a very extensive process of stuff. I think we'll get that done and then we'll check back tomorrow in the morning and kind of see if we made any progress. This is saying that it plans to regen today, which would be at 2 a.m., but we want it to regen right now. The big problem is that we can't turn the well off. So let's press and hold this for three seconds and it should go to fill. Okay. So we need to add salt. Mm. 
only needs two bags? Yeah, it only needs like a, like a third or less. Makes my mouth dry just looking at it, doesn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> Two, that's, that's, yeah, it's four hours. So I think we're gonna shut the well off, we're gonna wait four hours, and then uh, this thing should be ready to do its flush and rinse and all that jazz and regen, so. Let's go open on that one, and close on that one. And turn that off for now. Uh-oh, looks like we're out of luck right now. That hose is frozen solid. Yep, that one's full of ice too. Doggone it, not getting a free pass yet. Maybe we'll have breakfast first. All right guys, let's try this again. The sun's up now. It's a beautiful day. Oh yeah, that one doesn't sound frozen anymore. Um, let's see, oh yeah, the mud's thawed. <laughs> All right, let's try again. Looking good, looking good. This is gonna go on, on, and off. Just a little bit. All right. All right, this guy needs to go in this lovely place. There we go. Let's plug the softener back in here. All right, it still thinks there's 20 minutes of softening, even though it's been probably over 12 hours. So let's take a look at the salt tank. Oh yeah, that's looking fine and dandy. Let's see, I think we hit region. All right, what we're trying to get to is regen. And what we did last night was we got the brine together and now we're just going through, I think the last few steps, but there's a 90 minute step in here where I think it's the, is actually like the regen cycle where it slowly backwashes with the brine. So it looks like we got about 12-ish minutes and then we'll jump to that step. Looks like we're down to about 20 minutes to go. So I think in the remaining minutes here, let's all just pretend like this is gonna go as planned and we're gonna get the clear, softened, iron-free water that we expect. Let's head up to the cisterns and kind of inspect them, see where they're at with water quantity. And if everything goes well and we actually get to fill the cisterns, that'll give us an idea how much water we need. Dead bodies in there, that's good. Yep. The only thing I see in there is what should be in there. Water. Yep. That's all you could ask for. So the good news is it looks to me like we're probably down to about a quarter. So we probably have about what 500 gallons in there, so four or five hundred right. gallons. So we'll fill it three quarters full. So if we put a thousand gallons in, there's plenty of room. Yeah, so we should be able to top us up for a while. That'll be awesome. I was worried that we were too full and we wouldn't be able to really, we'd have to kind of monitor it. Yeah, that would suck to put filtered water on the whole side. That. Do you remember calling my dad from in the cistern when we were installing it? This hurts. Hi, Alyssa. Hold on. Hi, I'm FaceTiming you from our cistern. I, I, hear, I hear you now. Okay, so in, if you were wondering, there is no cell phone reception inside of a cistern. I think I'll just set this on here so we can come back up later once we start filling and kind of just check on it.
think it looked like this thing was doing a great job. Yep, looks like the water's all gone in there, so the brine has made its way into the softener. What do we got left? Two minutes. Two minutes to go? Yep. This might happen today. Maybe, I wouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> easy guys, we're not much. making promises here. Oh no, it switched on us and it didn't give us any warning. All right, we're now in the fast rinse cycle. Four minutes to go. Hey, that's looking really clean, by the way. So the water that was going in there kind of looked like well water, and I would say that actually looks pretty good. I mean, I'm not a connoisseur of what toilet water should look like, but if I was a cat, I'd drink that water. Bum, ba, bum, bum. 1,365 gallons to go. Okay, that's it guys, we survived a regen. Clock's ticking, it's flowing at three gallons a minute right now. So let's go see if any of this made any progress. That is mm, softened water. It's looking pretty good. Nope, looks like it did before. And this is well water. You know, it's actually looking pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, I give that bucket like two, three rinses. Boy, it's really hard to see, guys. The sun is getting brighter, which means it's more harsh. Let's fill it all the way yeah, up. Yeah, it looks way better, but that looks pretty good too, and that's straight from the well. Yep. Gosh, I think maybe taste each and see if we're getting rid of the iron in here. Probably the biggest risk with putting this water in the cistern without being 110% confident is that there may be iron in solution or clear water iron. And if it's sitting in the tanks and it oxidizes, we'll end up with rusty water in the tanks. And now we've got rusty water coming through the whole system and just, and we're looking at making a huge mess. So weird as it is, it sounds like, it looks to me like that's actually more murky than that. I agree. That well water actually looks more clear than the softened water. That's what I was thinking figure that out. So I'm starting to wonder if maybe when we did our test the other day, if, if we, the well was just so doggone clear that the water was just doggone clear. Right. We ran the well for so long, yep. like we primed it till it was crystal clear. And then we g it gave us the illusion the softener was doing a really flipping good job. There's no way to know, right? Well, let's kind of taste these and we'll find out if the iron's gone. I feel like the softener's doing its job. So this is just right out of the well. I can still taste the iron. Nope, no iron. And, and I, you know what, I think I can taste what's going on there. It may be just a little heavy on the salt. Um, really? we, so I don't know all the rules. We brined it overnight, and I don't know if you're supposed to do that. Like, we wanted to go to bed. We didn't want to stay up to four o'clock in the morning to deal with the softener. So if you look at this water now, it's pretty stinking clear. And it's getting more clear. Right. So I think what happened was maybe we brined it for too long because we brined it for like 12 hours instead of four hours. And there may be something to that. I don't taste salt in here, but I can. It's some, there's something there, and it's not hardness, and it's not iron. It just kind of tastes interesting. I'm almost thinking that that first little bit was just I don't know something unique, maybe like Weird. the first flush or something. It tastes fine. There's definitely iron in the well water, even though it's clear. So I think it's working. I mean, it's just weird. So I think the lesson here may be that as far as a sediment filter goes, the softener is not getting every last little bit of sediment. And so we end up with some turbidity. And I think we don't want that in the cisterns. So we may have to prime the well, unfortunately, until we get to this point where it's just crystal clear water. Then we can actually fill the cisterns. That's gonna be difficult. I think it's good enough for the hot tub. So oh, I hot say tub. let's okay. go for hot tub first. What about a cistern? If it stays that way. Well, it stays this way, yeah. If this hot tub looks this good, I'm cool. done. Yep. All right, let's do it. Okay. So we thought yesterday, because we ran into that turbidity problem, that it might be a function of too high a flow and maybe the softener wasn't able to keep up. And today, I think we're realizing that maybe the softener isn't able to remove some of the sediment or particulate like we thought on day one. So in the interest of getting more flow, we actually removed the pressure regulator completely. And now we're getting probably nine to 10 gallons a minute versus three. So six gallons a minute, we got 300 gallons to go. That's about 50 minutes. Do you see this sun coma guy right here? See him? Bugaboo. He's sleepy. <laughs> I think she's there. 
I think it's gonna start coming out the overflow any second now. Let's go to bypass and then we'll go away from that. So I'm kind of curious how many gallons that reads on the softener. Ooh, not even 350. So we're at 1,021 left to go. Let's maybe take a look at the softener. Yeah, let's do that. Or when I say softener, I mean hot tub. It looks crystal clear to me, looks minus I mean, all the usual suspects. Right. If you guys haven't already figured this out from watching our videos, this hot tub is impossible to keep sparkling clean like you probably would expect from the typical hot tub ad. But we do use a filter and we've also got kind of a, what do they call it, a, a screed or whatever, I don't even know, a screen a or something, a netting. A thingamajigger that we can take all the surface stuff off. This was sitting open all night. <laughs> I would say this is fine to put in the cisterns. How do you feel? I think let's do another bucket test. Oof, that's, that's looking pretty, good. pretty stinking good. Let's do the bucket test, then we'll know for shizzle. There's the softened water from earlier. Hasn't changed color or anything, so that's a good sign. That's what's coming out of the well. I mean, that's it. <laughs> I mean, the stuff coming out of the well looks fantastic. Yeah, it tastes good. I think we're good. So I think we're gonna fill the cisterns. I think what really sucks about this is that we've wasted 2,000 gallons dumping it on the ground yep. to get through all this rigmarole to put 1,000 gallons in the cistern. So at this point, at this point, it's looking pretty rough around the edges, but I think like everything, we do it a couple well, times, we'll get better. Time, so in yep. theory, we should waste a lot less. Yep. There we go. All right, we're gonna put some water this direction. Okay, you can open it. And then let's close this one. All right, now we're full on hydrant filling. Uh-oh, you're right, we're getting no flow. Uh-oh. So guys, our fill line froze over the winter because it's only buried about 18 inches down and we had some really cold temperatures. Everything's telling us that our fill line is actually still frozen. So we're gonna switch to what we've been doing over the winter, which is filling through the bottom of the cisterns. We have a fill hydrant here and we have a drain hydrant. The nice thing is we can actually fill through the drain hydrant, which is buried three feet down and we had no issues with it freezing whatsoever. Six gallons a minute. All right, that's good news. So we have 1,003 gallons to go. Three hours? At six gallons a minute, that's gonna be about three hours. So, so do you want him to go fly? Should we just go sit on the deck? I'm not opposed. Guys, I think we're sitting on the deck. Well guys, that's getting pretty close. I think it warrants going up to the cisterns to just see how they're doing. Guys, if this project feels chaotic, it's because it is. I don't see anything coming out of the overflow, so that's good. Moment of truth. I don't know, I'm scared. Are we gonna find mud? No, I don't gonna, think so. You don't think so? Looking Ooh. pretty good. That's more than half, that's like three quarters. Oh yeah, it has a mild hint of like chlorine. That's what I was gonna say. But you know, that could be one of two things. So this softener has a, I don't even know what to call it, a chlorinator. And it's not, it's not injecting chlorine, it's actually electrocuting the water as it goes out of the softener, which liberates a chlorine atom, and that chlorine is then free. And it kind of has like a sanitizing benefit to like your water lines and stuff. I certainly wouldn't be sad to have that in the cisterns. And the beautiful thing is chlorine by itself, I don't think is stable. So it wants to bind to something. So as it's exposed to the air, it ends up just like evaporating or off gassing or whatever you want to call it. And then it's gone and all the benefits are there, but the chlorine goes away. So if it smells like a little bit of chlorine, I'm okay with that. Keep the, the cisterns nice and clean. Perfect. Are you freaking kidding me? He has another critter? Wow, it's fast. <laughs> He's going. That's like his third critter today that we've seen. Things are going good. We're down to 53 gallons, so we'll probably let it go down to the zero mark. Yeah, why not? Um, it's probably going to say like regenerating today. So what we'll probably do then is just unplug it. I don't think we want to go through another regen cycle today. Kind of over it. <laughs> right now, right? <laughs> yeah, but the, that's the good news is we could basically regenerate tonight. Like we could start that as soon as it's done and we could be ready to put another thousand gallons in tomorrow. You know, so, yep. you know, two days without having to leave the house. I guess do this when you're home. <laughs> 
that's what we're learning. Like this was a quite a nightmare to get through. We're gonna have to talk to our water guy and see if we can figure out why the sediment isn't going away or what happened there because I just there's something it seems morally wrong to me to pump a thousand gallons out of the well to get it to where it's like crystal clear before we start running it through the softener. I don't know. To, to waste a thousand gallons to get a thousand gallons seems like yeah. a poor water management strategy. Because <laughs> what if in the dead of August, you know, the water table's lower in the well, like we're just True. dumping all the water over the side of the hill in the interest of getting clean water. But I would say that this has gone well, so I guess the ultimate question now is do we develop any water quality issues? <laughs> Let's hope no. So we decided we're gonna keep these buckets and see if they oxidize. Yeah, so this is well water. It is It is more murky. There's, it does have that yellowish twinge. There's a, twi there's a twinge to it. This definitely is more clear overall. So we're just gonna keep them and leave them out for a day or two and see if we get any color change which will be an indicator of what the cisterns are doing. Mm -hmm. um, this stuff's been out for quite a while, and I don't know how fast that oxidation happens. I don't know if it's, you know, within a day or it takes like a month, I have no clue. So I think that's part of the planning the cistern sizing too, was making sure that we're not, we're Letting basically- Letting water sit. You, yeah. don't, you don't want 10,000 gallons of storage for a small household. You actually mm -hmm. do want to be cycling through your water. Which is one of the struggles that we're having in contemplating how to tie this well into our permanent water solution is do we basically keep the cisterns topped off? Which I think is a poor water management strategy. Right. You don't want stagnant water. You, yeah, you want to, it's like you want to empty them. Mm -hmm. Keep it moving. So. Or there's, there's still that chance that we don't filter the water that goes into the cisterns and Ooh, they get all murky uh, and gross. That's going to be a tough decision. But seeing how much work all this is, I feel like doing this and then using it to wash cars and water the garden like seems like a sin. Well, the softened water you're definitely going to use to wash a car, but the so non-softened water, who cares? Water mm -hmm. the garden away, that's all the true. calcium's not going to hurt a lick. Maybe the iron will help, I don't know. But yeah, this stuff's, I don't know. That's why we're not there yet. <laughs> One thing at a time. Okay! Dun da da! That'll do it. Just the poor puff off. Thing's been out there running for like six hours. Full cistern, full hot tub, full the bellies. Only, the only thing left. I just filled my belly. Is one of those <laughs> snacks that turned into dinner. Yeah, there's that moment, everyone has that moment where it's like four o'clock, do I snack or do I, do I snack eat? snack or do I eat food? Six o'clock, four o'clock. <laughs>